Here is Microsoft Flight Simulator in the Lake District. I chose this place because it's dear to me, and so I've got lots of pictures there to compare with this simulation. In these comparison shots you'll notice the AI mistakes a lot of shrubs and bracken for tall trees, and so it makes the tops of mountains look a lot more forested than they are in reality. In a way I like this because it helps provide a sense of scale to these otherwise very featureless regions, but it's obviously wrong to place trees here. But on the whole, I think Microsoft Flight Simulator does a brilliant job simulating the crags and lakes of this part of England, and it proved to be the ideal place to experiment with Flight Simulator's extremely lifelike clouds. You can adjust the height, thickness, density and other things about the clouds in this game. You can have several layers of them, you can make these layers overlap, and no matter what you do, it looks realistic and it makes me think, oh, so that's why these clouds look the way they do. So it's definitely worth messing about with if you have even the slightest curiosity about clouds. Which let's face it, you do. And it's great to experiment with it in a region where they get to interact with mountains and valleys and stuff. In my time as a YouTuber I've gained a lot of experience alt-tapping between different images to try and line things up for comparison shots like these, but this project is the first time I've got confused between which is which, because I kept trying to shift the camera position on my real life pictures instead of in Flight Simulator, which I guess is the highest praise when it comes to describing how lifelike this game can look. The lighting isn't the same and the landscape evidently isn't captured at the same time of year, but it's still got that realistic look to it that, at a glance, makes you question whether it's real or whether you're being tricked. And then you hate yourself for having doubts one way or the other. As you can see, I sometimes couldn't get the clouds looking quite the same. But then, they're clouds aren't they? They aren't known for doing what you want them to, certainly not here in England. But still, the clouds really are the star of the show here. Their impact is up there with the first time I saw pixel shading in a game, or physics, or real time lighting. Having good clouds enhances how the whole image looks, and not just the clouds themselves. It sometimes amazes me to remember that these aren't being handcrafted. These are just general cloud presets which could be applied anywhere in the world, but they look so dynamic and varied in their appearance that they often look like they were designed for this particular spot, just for me. That's how nice I feel they look in Flight Simulator. I remember how static games used to look, when a place would look the same no matter how many times you visited. Then when games started getting real time day night cycles, it added variety to how that same place could look. But clouds add a thousand times more variety again. No two moments are the same, and it's definitely something that could benefit a lot more games than just this flight simulator. <laughs> the next Elder Scrolls. Setting the same time and date as when the pictures were taken revealed just how precisely the sun's position is simulated, to the point where you could work out in advance where to stand and at which date to see the sun setting or rising at a particular spot on the horizon. As you can probably tell, I'm struggling to move on from these cloud examples because it's everything I didn't realise I needed until now. But I must get onto more real life comparisons because I'm sure this video is being watched by lots of normal people, probably who live in this area, who can't understand my obsession with virtual clouds. This is me, climbing the tallest mountain in England, carrying the group's bags like a beast. And here it is in Flight Simulator, with a lot more trees, but you'll notice I don't really care much about this comparison because there aren't any clouds. This is England's second tallest mountain. It was our final morning in the Lake District and we decided to speedrun this one because the storm clouds were approaching. Notice I'm a lot more excited about this example because there are clouds. And especially because Flight Simulator's ones look more awesome than real life's pathetic looking haze does. I mean, increasing the humidity went some way towards helping, but it still wasn't the same effect. Turns out humidity makes quite a difference to how things look, especially to sunsets, which benefit a lot from this stuff. But maybe not too much, or you risk it becoming one of those oversaturated Instagram disasters. So returning to the sunsets that I failed at capturing earlier, let's try them again, but with humidity! So here's the best I can achieve with clouds alone. Not too bad, but it lacks that thing that makes you so excited you can't help but reach for your trouser pockets. To get your phone. Wow, that's much more like it! Okay, too much. Wow! But it still doesn't look like the sunset I'm trying to recreate. I'm just going to waffle on a bit to buy this video more time to marvel at pretty looking clouds, and I'll just say, I realise I'm not qualified to do this sort of video. I thought I was. I thought it was going to be a simple case of comparing two pictures from the same location. It might be nice if I set the time and date to the same to aid in the comparisons. But then all these other variables showed up as well, and it turns out you have to be some sort of tech literate rain man genius weatherman with a beastly PC to extract the most out of comparisons you make between Flight Simulator and reality. But until that magical person comes along you're stuck with me, going off on tangents and learning as I go. Right, let's quickly show you some more comparisons before I get sidetracked by something else. Langdale Pikes are fantastic mountains, they're not especially tall yet can be seen from almost everywhere else in the Lake District. 
It's a shame that Flight Simulator rounds out their iconic shapes. These shots could benefit from a bit more humidity, but like I'm going to spend a few more hours recapturing these clips again. As a child, I have this memory of getting stuck halfway up one of these. I scraped all the skin off one of my fingers and was sat there on a the ledge, grasping my bloody stump, crying as lots of other people just climbed past me and carried on their way. Those were the days. Oh no, I've got sidetracked again. This example at Tarn House again demonstrates how much prettier the clouds in Flight Simulator can look than the sort of clouds you may encounter when being in the Lake District for real. This is Striding Edge. It doesn't look like much, but whenever I see it in person I'm like, yeah, let's take the other route instead. I messed about with different weather conditions up here and just had to show you the snowy one because it looks so atmospheric, especially with a storm approaching. Yep, one of the coolest features in Flight Simulator, quite literally, is the way you can cover everything with snow. This even takes into account the distance from water and I'm sure many other complex variables that I don't have a clue about. I tested to see if it could snow in the Sahara Desert and it also worked, so it looks like it's being automatically generated. Then I tested to see if it could snow in the Amazon rainforest because it can sometimes snow in the Sahara Desert. But not here. And then I tried it in Greenland too. Don't ask why, but doing this delayed global warming, so that's cool. Why am I mentioning snow? Did it snow when I visited the Lake District in June? No, I just thought it looked nice, that's all. If you don't care then we'll get back onto relevant examples. What does water look like? No, seriously, it has so many different forms it might not even be on its final one just yet, although we have covered three already in this video. Sometimes real life water can look so clear that it's surely got to be fake. Other times it's as reflective as a mirror, and other times it refuses to reflect anything at all, much to the horror of video games which know that if they try to imitate that look they'll be criticised for looking bad because as everybody knows, water has reflections. But when the winds start blowing and the water's surface gets choppy enough, every bit of it ends up reflecting so many different directions that it doesn't show any reflection at all. It's like the Vanta Black of ray tracing. So as if all the variables I've already had to contend with when making these comparisons weren't enough, Flight Simulator also lets you turn the wind value up. And as you do, the reflections gradually get less reflecty until all you have are choppy waves. And crashed planes. So there you have it, realistic looking water that doesn't have a precise or pretty looking reflection. Note how real life water retains the colour of the sky but not a lot else. Clearly, this water in Flight Simulator is reflecting too much. That's better, it still doesn't look quite the same as real life looks but, well I'm going to go and say what we're all thinking, it looks better doesn't it? But you know what looks even better? I proudly present to you Flight Simulator if you turn the wind value up as far as it can go. 77 meters per second is 277 kilometers an hour or 172 miles an hour. Just ignore the plane stalling warnings. I'm sure that's just irrelevant information, kind of like that check engine light that's always on on my car's dashboard. So what's the Lake District like in a hurricane? First all the trees start having a disco, clouds begin to race across the sky, and then the storms begin. Big terrifying clouds racing overhead, lightning streaking around being all scary and stuff. Torrential downpours blob over the landscape like dark blobs, and it all looks really really scary. The wind turbines love it. We're witnessing a category 5 hurricane where, I quote, catastrophic damage will occur, a high percentage of framed houses will be destroyed with total roof failure and wall collapse, fallen trees and power poles will isolate residential areas, most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks or months. But at least the clouds look nice. You thought I was going to end the video here, didn't you? Just with ramping the wind up, making it all look silly and calling it a day. No, I'm beyond such cheap gimmicks. This simulator has more significance to me than that. Look, here's me, Child Philip, exploring the Lake District. It looks like he's enjoying the walk, but what he's really thinking about is how awesome it would be if computers could someday simulate this in real time. And here he is later on in the day back at the cottage playing Driver 1 on the PlayStation. No wonder he dreamed of better world simulations. One such advancement was teased back in 2007 when Microsoft demonstrated the benefits of Flight Simulator using DirectX 10. Look at the waves, the increased lighting contrast, the improved clouds and those pretty looking crepusculars puskiling everywhere. An artist designed this depicting how it could look. Obviously it didn't, but it might do now. I'd love to say that this was shot in the Lake District. Clearly it wasn't, so I took a virtual trip to where it really is, which is somewhere in America, right near the border with Canada. And it's nothing too special to look at really, is it? Though I can see why they didn't feature this monstrosity in the original image. There's even an artificial line running along the water. 
the older flight sim didn't have this problem, but we'll do what we can to recreate this location. If we adjust the direction of the sun, and then of course add some clouds, up the humidity, I mean the reflections are a problem because we've already established that you can't have both the reflections of mountains and splishy splashy wishy washy waves, so I'll go for the choppy water and show you how it's supposed to look in this situation. And there we have it. And no, I'm not that impressed either. So either this shot shows Flight Simulator X at its best, or this one shows Flight Simulator 2020 at its worst. Or the artist was just full of bullshit. Maybe all three. And to add to injury, this is a place that Google has 3D scanned, which immensely increases the detail on the mountains, making Grinnell Point look less like a point and more like the proper jagged mountain that it is. It looks so different it's difficult to believe it's the same place as in Flight Simulator. Evidently, there's still a long way to go before this program looks truly photorealistic. Now, there are ways of importing Google's 3D scan data into Flight Simulator, but maybe I'll do that another time. This video was intended to be a simple little comparison video, but it's already bloated into a week-long mega project. So I'll cheap out here, turn on the storm clouds, ramp up the wind and call it a day. And hopefully some awesome Rain Man weatherman with a beast PC will carry on from where I've left off. I was caught staring into space the other day. What I was actually doing was figuring out the height of the clouds so I could recreate them in Flight Simulator later on. But I was in company I'd rather not confess these things to, so I'll just confess them to you now instead. Is it sad that I obsess about virtual worlds so much when we've got a perfectly good real one sitting just outside our windows? Sometimes even I feel guilty for doing it. But I think I gain more appreciation for both when I take the time to experiment with one and to draw parallels between the two. So thank you, Flight Simulator for giving me more fun with your clouds than I ever thought was possible. So here we are at Top Helvellian, and over there is Fairfield. And that's an important one because the next one along, the smaller looking one is Great Rig, which is the same height as the tallest mountain in Skyrim. This one's better. <laughs>